While headlines get dominated by the rally in U.S. equities, Canadian markets have also reached new record highs recently. Joining us now to discuss whether this run can continue is Michael O'Brien, Managing Director and Head of the Core Canadian Equity Team at TD Asset Management. Michael, great to have you back on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's always fun. You think about the, the quiet grind higher. Even today, we breached, uh, I think, 24,000 for the first time ever. We'll see where we are the close. But still, these are new highs for the Canadian market. Perhaps hasn't been as uh, in focus as the U.S. market. What, what's going on here? What has been working in Canada? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's a typically Canadian approach, isn't it? Just, you <laughs> yeah. know, understated and uh, getting the job done. So, yes, it's been a really good year for, uh, for Canadian equities. Um, and when you look across, you know, where did that come from? Um, a whole bunch of different sectors have really contributed over the course of the year. Earlier in the year, uh, the oil and gas stocks did very well. They were kind of leadership in Q1. That trade's cooled off a little bit. People are a little, little less certain about where oil prices are going. Uh, but they kind of handed the baton off to some of the different sectors. And so you've seen your, your insurers have a, a very solid year. Uh, the banks have really come to life lately as people get a little more confidence around um, you know, the upside towards uh, loan losses potentially not being as bad as feared. Um, you've seen the gold stocks just on fire. Um, so a lot of the different parts of the market and then the most recent, um, you know, I would say most recent participants, or most re recent leaders have been those interest sensitive names uh, benefiting from these, you know, the beginning of the rate cut cycle both in Canada and south of the border with the, the Fed cutting 50 last week. Um, so, you know, your traditional yield sectors have really been strong the last month or two. So it's been a pretty broad swath of the market that's kind of uh, been leadership in any given day. If we compare that to the run that we've seen in U.S. equities, obviously the big part of the story was about the tech names. Has there been a broadening out in the States too, or is our rally a different composition than theirs? Yeah, well, I think there has been a bit of a broadening out in, in the States. I mean, the, the S&P is still making new highs. Um, but if you look at the MAG-7 or, you know, the, what has been viewed as leadership there, the NVIDIAs, the Microsofts, the Amazons, all of those stocks are still below their, uh, their year-to-date highs. So clearly there's been a broadening out in, in that market as well. I think it's, it's just more pronounced in the Canadian market because we got less of the MAG-7 and much more of all the other stuff. So I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a North American phenomenon, but it has a bigger punch here in Canada just by the, the composition of the market. Now, you mentioned the three rate cuts we've already seen from the Bank of Canada. They started in June. The Fed finally got yep. in on the game as well last week and come right out of the gate with 50 basis yep. points. We put that kind of activity together in the expectation of more. What could this mean for the market? Uh, well, clearly, I mean, that's one of the reasons the markets are at highs today is that uh, market investors have been expecting this. Investors have been uh, anticipating it. They've been salivating, waiting for these rate cuts. <laughs> They finally uh, come. So now it's, it's almost one of those situations where the dog has finally caught the car. Now what are, what's he going to do with it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so going forward from here, you know, we've got the, the rate cut cycle. That debate's over. Um, I, my, in my opinion, I think the next leg higher, if there's going to be you know, continued gains in the market, uh, it has to be from confirmation that we are, in fact, going to get a soft landing. Uh, in other words, bringing it back to you know, your, your basics, bringing it back to fundamentals, I think the next leg higher from here has to be driven by good old-fashioned earnings growth. And so we need to see economic uh, data giving us comfort, not so much that things are great today, but that they're not going to get worse and that those rate cuts will have time to, to kick in and really stimulate the economy. And if that happens, then you know, we can start looking forward to the back half of 2025 into 2026 and feel better about the, the, the earnings prospects for all of these companies as uh, you know, hopefully these rate cuts begin to bolster the economy. Bolstering the economy, but also in the argument that's been made, and we've, you and I have talked about this through the yeah. years, we waited for those rate cuts that once you start to see the Bank of Canada trimming its trend-setting rate, then maybe some of these yield plays, and I think this is already starting to happen, start to little, look more attractive to investors. They're not going to get the yeah. yield that they were getting in savings products or in GICs. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And this, this clearly is something that um, investors have been anticipating as well. Um, there are a whole legion of people, I, I would count myself among them, that you, know, you had a few thousand bucks or whatever it is you had uh, a year, year and a half ago, put it into a nice juicy GIC yielding 5 6%. Um, no risk, no shame in doing that. I think a lot of people have done that. So there's, um, I think the view is there's quite a bit of money parked in those types of short-term, high-yielding, cash-like vehicles. 
uh, what's going to happen, and again, people are anticipating this with a, a lot of uh, excitement, I think, is uh, you know, that GIC that you took out a year ago at 5.5%, the next time you go to renew it, it's going to be maybe 3.5% or 3% or 2.5%. Uh, I think a natural home for that type of investor isn't necessarily to buy you know, the sexy tech stock south of the border, it's more to buy one of those good old-fashioned regulated utilities. They're or still pipeline looking for the yield, they're still looking for the dividend. The telcos, and, and they want relatively safe yield. And so I think that's an opportunity from a funds flow pr perspective uh, there could be a fair bit of money coming in over the next you know, year, year and a half, as long as this rate cut cycle continues, uh, that could be finding a, a new home in some of these higher yielding, uh, more stable parts of the, the equity market. And that takes us back to a comment you were making earlier, while these plays, because of the yields, might look a little more attractive. When I think about who are the yield payers, they're either the telcos, you know, the banks, uh, some of the other sectors, they're very economically sensitive. So it's like yes. sort of like, we got to have that, we got to stick that soft landing for all of this sort of to work together hand in hand. Yeah, and now, I mean, the, it's interesting if you sort of carve up the different parts of the, the TSX composite in terms of what we would consider the interest sensitives. There's, there's one group, which is the single biggest basket in the, the TSX composite, which is your financials, your banks and your insurers. Um, they're very rate sensitive, but they're also, I would, more, more playing offense. Um, you know, they need a good economy. They need that soft landing to, you know, put a, um, stop the, the loan loss cycle from uh, continuing, um, reaccelerate earnings growth. So there's that basket. And then there's the more traditionally defensive basket, like your REITs, your pipelines, your regulated utilities, which you know, traditionally investors have viewed them as a good option um, in a risk-off market, you know, more defensive posturing. They both benefit from this same theme of you know, rates coming down and potential fund flows out of these GIC-like instruments. Um, but it really depends, you know, do you want to put your foot on the gas or put it on the brakes? Um, there's a bit of a flavor for, for both, depending on how you want to approach that. Now, uh, this is hard to say, but we've had the quiet run. The U.S. makes new highs, we make new highs. Is there a case for Canadian outperformance in the near term? Well, I think what Canada has going for it is, uh, I mean, what Canada's had going for it all year is, from a contrarian perspective, the attention hasn't been on us. The attention has been south of the border, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, much more exciting stories there. You know, that type of thing. Yeah, AI chips. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's Rose, that's where the cars driving themselves, yeah, the future. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so that, that's where the market focus has been on, and so that you know what I would call very subdued sentiment towards Canadian equities, from a contrarian perspective, that's what you love to see because it means they're under owned, uh, room for upside. So I think that is still the case today. If you look at valuations south of the border and compare them to uh, you know the TSX composite. Um, you know, far less de investors are far less demanding of the stocks in the TSX composite here. Uh, in order to sort of fulfill that, that hope um, of Canada outperforming the U.S., I think the Canadian market expectations are lower, but it's also a more traditionally cyclical market. When you look at the real, you know, the heart of it, you know, your banks, your insurers, your, uh, your resource complex, your energy producers, your miners, uh, you need a good backdrop economically in order to make those sectors work sustainably. So we've kind of had that, the first leg of the trade was valuations going from very low levels to what I would characterize as reasonably priced. Uh, the next level has to be driven by earnings growth, and that's going to come with an improvement in the economic backdrop.